Welcome to the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. From the capital city of Maryland, Annapolis, where the pageantry has been plentiful this week, Temple, the American Conference champions, to face the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Wake, one and five in its last six, but in a bowl game under third year head coach Dave Clawson for the first time, but Wake through his entire tenure has been playing at a disadvantage. That's because of Tommy Elrod, the former Wake Forest radio analyst who was leaking plays and information to opponents. He has since been fired. He was an assistant coach under Jim Grove, retained as the radio analyst under Dave Clawson. And you look at the timeline, November 11th is when this all started, when a play sheet was found at Louisville Stadium, a portion of the game plan. Then other schools have gotten involved as well. Meantime, for the opponent today, the Temple Owls, there's some upheaval as well for the American Conference title winners. Last two years have been bang-up years for the Temple Owls. Best two seasons in school history, back-to-back 10-win -back seasons, American Conference champions, and they did it by winning on this very field. In fact, Temple blew out the Naval Academy. 21-0 was the lead, 21-3 at halftime, 34-10 was the final score. This Temple defense is top five in the country and a very dangerous bunch held Navy to under four yards a carry and that tough offense to defend. So Matt Rule gets a Gatorade bath, he gets trophy, and then he gets job. He's gone, the head coach, to Baylor. So Ed Foley is taking over. He's survived four separate coaches now at Temple. So how much of a difference do you think we'll see in Temple or Wake Forest with the things that have happened to both schools? I think Wake Forest is relieved. And you would think that Wake Forest is gonna pull out all the stops on the offensive side of the ball, but still rely on the defensive side. Temple is a very good team, and they played very good down the stretch. Their last six games have been lights out, running the football. But Temple's strength is about all these fourth-year juniors and fifth-year seniors. They're going to hook the wagon to those guys today. Well, Temple 10-3 and three, looking for an 11-win season here at the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. And here in Annapolis, being near the Naval Academy, some wonderful pageantry before the game. We couldn't get Kelly attached to a parachute. I think that's Kark. I think Kark came in that way. Just a beautiful setting to watch a football game and to celebrate our country here in Annapolis, Maryland, and the flag going the opposite way because we are on the opposite yeah. side here in Annapolis, but uh, the flyover just before the game as well, and a wonderful day here as well, about 60 degrees for game time in Annapolis, a couple days after Christmas for just the second meeting all time between Wake Forest and Temple. What was the first meeting like, you ask? It was back in 1930, 86 years ago. Miller versus Miller, F.S. Miller versus Henry J. Miller. And we went to the microfiche to get it for you all the way back in 1930. 9,000 chilled spectators were there. And it was 36-0 for Temple University. Revenge! is available in Annapolis. We welcome those of you just joining us here in Annapolis, Maryland, Wake Forest and Temple, two teams dealing with a rather confusing, perplexing, and sometimes slightly downtrodden last couple of weeks. Wake Forest with the leak of information, former radio analyst Tommy Elrod, Temple under new management. Head coach Matt Rule's on his way to Waco, and off we go in the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. John Armstrong on the return for Wake Forest, and he has the Demon Deacons just short of the 35-yard line. So, maybe some relief for John Walford, who throws on first down. The junior quarterback hits the freshman Scotty Washington. And a short gain for the Demon Deacons, an offense that has struggled this year, leaks or not. Yeah, and Wake Forest is going to have to find a way to have some chunk type of plays, Jason. Explosive plays, get some of those chunk yards against a very, very, very good Temple defense. The sledding is not going to be easy here this afternoon for Wake. Dave Clawson, before the bowl game, said, look, there's no mystery when you defend us. The offense has not been 
terribly good for Wake this year as Delvon Randall was on the coverage of Tabari Hines, and it's third down and long. And uh, we talked about it. There was some relief on Dave yeah. Lawson's face, and looking for closure takes so long in a process like this. Wake Forest found out in November at Louisville by finding one of its play sheets at Louisville's stadium that there was some leaking of information going on. This is the first game that Wake Forest has after the whole scandal. Third and long for Walford. Scanning, three-man rush gets there, flag comes in, and Walford throws an interception. Sean Chandler on the sideline picks it off. Horrible decision by John Walford. Holding offense, number seven. Belly is applied. Result of the first down. And that play was, was dead before it ever began. The holding play came out quite early, and Walford got chased to his left, and this ball just simply needs to go out of bounds. You're third and 12 to begin with. You have a holding flag on the play already, and Walford makes a bad decision and throws this up for grabs to Sean Chandler. Temple is going to pressure Walford all day. He has to make better decisions than that. Been sacked 36 times this year, tied for 114th in the country for the junior quarterback, Walford. And now Temple, top 15 in the nation in terms of turnover margin, has the first one very early today as Philip Walker, the senior quarterback, leads the offense out of the field. Play action for Walker. Loads of time. Down the sideline, and he's got it! Touchdown, Adonis Jennings! The first thing that you have to do when you play Temple is not allow Temple's defense to set the tone for their offense because their offense will take advantage of it. Well, this is what that looks like. Philip Walker is going to throw the post to Jennings, who beats the veteran Brad Watson, number 25 from Wake. The most veteran defensive back gets beat by Jennings on that sudden change type of offense, once again set up by a vicious Temple defense. One play, 48 yards, seven points for the Temple Owls, who may want to move to Annapolis, Maryland. They beat Navy here for the American Conference Championship, and they have shocked Wake on the first play from scrimmage. Banner couple years for the Temple Owls, first back-to-back 10-win -back seasons in school history in the American Conference Championship, first conference championship since 1967 for the Temple Owls. The guy coaching today is Ed Foley, who essentially becomes the bridge guy to the next coach, Jeff Collins, who has been hired, but Foley is now on essentially his fourth head coach. He's part of the wallpaper. He's very good at in it. In Philly. Yeah, he said that initially it's like a hand grenade went off in the middle of your program, and then you kind of get your, you got to get your hands on the kids and say, okay, what's next? And you got to give them something tangible, and he's obviously very good at doing that. Might be a West Wing fan with the What's next as Wake Forest will have it from the 25 cart. Spoke to Ed Foley before the game. Wonderful, wonderful man. And he kind of embodies the Temple toughness. He also told me this is like a Philly fantasy camp for him, being the head coach at Temple for this bowl season. And the school, why is he here for nine years? Well, it's perfectly aligned with his values. He told us this week, if you dig, you'll find diamonds in your backyard. You just got to be a little tough and get some mud on your hands. That's the Philly way, and that's the Temple way. And, and Fran Dunphy has done it very similarly with the basketball program as Foley looks across the sideline at one of his very close friends, by the way, Dave Clawson, the head coach of Wake Forest. They were in each other's wedding. Run play for Cade Carney, and Wake Forest gets a nice gain across the 35-yard line. John Walford has had a fine career for Wake Forest this season. First 1,500 and 500 guy in Demon Deacon history. A, a long history for the program, but not terribly successful until recent vintage. 
and he's very experienced and so he can carry out the game plan and he's the best runner he he might be the most explosive guy on the offensive side particularly out of that run game but it's all about decision making from his position against this temple defense Walford quickly out of the pocket and that was one of the signals Warren Ruggiero the offensive coordinator said to us yesterday he said look if John Walford is set in the pocket and comfortable foot wise we may have a good day offensively yeah that's a great coaching point by Ruggiero but if people are under my feet it's hard for a quarterback to get his feet set and that's where Walford has been so far he's had no time to look at really anything that was an RPO he gets the pull look to throw the ball outside and then was going to throw into trouble out there as well Colburn is in to play tailback and Avery Williams got a shoulder into him it's going to be third down for Wake Forest Avery Williams's hair is absolutely on fire to start this game He's a 5'10", 225-pound, fifth-year senior. He took this team by the scruff of the neck after Matt Rule decided to leave, and he said, you know what? This is going to be who we are today, and he's following up with an outstanding start to this football game. He's a Baltimore kid, went to Archbishop Curley in Baltimore. His wake faces another third down and long, third and 12, third and 11, third and nine so far. Wolford got it off and has a completion to Barry Hines into Temple territory just short of the 40 yard line gain of 18 first down and Hines sit down in that void because when you're third and long Temple's going to play some zone on the back end you have to find the void and Hines did right there some pace here for Wake Forest Wolford down the seam he's got his tight end Cam Serenay touchdown Finally back healthy, Cam Serenay with his third score. It goes 41 yards. Well, Jason, we wondered where the explosive elements could come from. Serenay is one of those guys. He's a big tight end. He runs good routes. He's athletic. He's just been banged up this year. But it's the fake bubble screen outside or the now screen and find your tight end down the middle when the defense loses eye discipline. Very well designed by Wake Forest on that play. Cam Serenay not far from home from Ashburn, Virginia with his 12th career touchdown. Some daylight for Serenay and Wake Forest. Deadlocks it at seven. Weaver on the approach as Temple gets it back. Isaiah Wright, the freshman on the return, has some room to the outside of the 45-yard line. Mentioned earlier, Ed Foley and Dave Clawson, the two head coaches in this game, know each other very well. How about 1989 and 90 at Albany, graduate assistants at SUNY Albany. Then after that, go to Fordham. Dave Clawson hires Ed Foley as his offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. Foley then became head coach at Fordham. They know each other very well. They were, in fact, in each other's weddings. Foley is more of a laid-back kind of guy, had Hawaiian shirts in Jacksonville as his wedding scene. Dave Clawson was suit and tie and cigars walking down the New York City streets. They're essentially Oscar and Felix on those two sidelines. As Thomas gets nothing. Well, so now that Wake Forest's offense woke up a little bit, Wake had two possessions, seven plays, five yards. One of them was a play was minus 13 on a pass, three penalties, but then they score on a quick strike. That's what Wake Forest's defense needs from their offense to get things going. Wake Forest can play defense. They just need an opportunity. Second down for Walker, another screen, giving ground. And that's going to lose a big dose of yardage. Thomas is sworn. Thomas Brown came in to throw him back. It's a loss of eight. It was going to be the tunnel screen. Actually, it was the tunnel screen, but very well defended. 
outside on the edge, Wake Forest bubbles the tunnel screen, pushes the receiver off the line of scrimmage, so there is no cutback line. And then you're not going to find green grass cutting it back against Wake typically. They're very good pursuers on the defensive side of the ball. Forces Temple into a third down and 18. Here comes pressure. Walker is hit and dropped. Josh Panks, the redshirt senior, on a carry North Carolina with the sack. Defensive coordinator Mike Elko for Wake, who we know is on his way to Notre Dame, talks about not gifting even one yard to the offense. Defend everything. And this is the second time that Wake Forest has gotten off the field defensively because they get Philip Walker in third and a passing down, and then they light him up two times in a row that drives into that way. Back to back, three and outs for Temple on the offensive end, and Wake Forest has the momentum. Line drive punt from Starzik to Bates. Who's John Walford on first down, it hits Colburn out of the backfield in a juggling act across the 35-yard line. Colburn runs what's called an angle route. He acts as if he's going to the flat, and then he comes back inside and very well designed, and Wolford puts it on it. More tempo for Wake Forest, and Wolford is upended by Alwan as we check in with Clark. Mike Elko and his rise to prominence as a defensive coordinator. And I asked him, what's Notre Dame getting in you? He told me he's a guy that knows modern defense, obviously modern offense in this spread era, and he loves the kids he's coaching. The group who missed the most, the D-backs, those are his guys. He might miss his running backs, too, on the offensive side, the way this game's going. Colburn with a gain of 13 and a first down. And you know what really changed it right now for Wake Forest offensively is going tempo. Tempo is working for Wake Forest currently. Wolford, quick throw to Barry Hines, cutting inside. Touchdown, Wake Forest! Jason, when an offense decides to go fast, the purpose of going up-tempo is two things. You don't allow the defense to substitute, and you thin the defense out because they have to get lined up. The quarterback gets a letter, better look. The quarterback makes quicker and better decisions, typically. It's working really well right now for Wake Forest offensive line. How about bowl season, by the way? Back-to-back -back days, the two worst offensive teams in the ACC have been dynamite. Boston College yesterday, and Wake Forest has 14 points in the first nine and change in Annapolis. Yeah, and this is all about tempo, and, and I really like the change by Glenn Thomas, excuse me, Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, and that's what tempo does, and it, it was a really good adjustment early, getting the ball out in space quickly to the playmakers, and right now those playmakers are getting the most of tempo defensively. If you want to line up in a phone booth and play tempo, you're going to lose almost regardless of who you are offensively, and that is not who Wake Forest wants to be. Spread it out, go tempo, and they found something they like in the last two drives. As Isaiah Wright on his return, draws a flag just short of the 30-yard line. See how Temple reacts after back-to-back -back three and outs. Thomas with some room after the penalty to the 21-yard line. Mark Kelly, Lee, the leading tackler for the Demon Deacons with the stop. Park. Kelly, I know you're a quarterback guru. You'll love to hear this. Uh, later on, Washington State plays Minnesota. Luke Falk, great news for Washington State. He's coming back for his final year of eligibility, a former walk-on. No quarterback has had more yards over the last couple years passing than Luke Falk in the Pac-12. So huge news for Cougars fan and a guy who's a walk-on, a developmental player, one of the top-rated junior quarterbacks, could have gone to the draft. He's sticking around, Kel. Temple goes on the ground across 25 for Thomas and a first down for the Owls. Luke. 
Raquel Armstead is in, and the run defense once again holds the line for Wake Forest. A loss of one. That's the fifth tackle for loss for the Demon Deacons in the first 13 minutes of this game. And that's who both of these defenses are. They're tackle for loss, create the negative, find a play to get off the field, and both defenses are pretty darn good at that. That last pass interference call by Brad Watson, he's a veteran guy and was in perfect position. All you have to do is keep your cool in the end and just break up the pocket. Instead, he held Jennings a little bit, and it hurt his team defensively. Second and 11, more pressure coming. Temple picks it up, and Walker is high. You think he's seeing that pressure on the way? You know what I think it might have been? He's looking at that hand once again. Remember, it was two plays ago on that blitz where Watson ended up getting called for that pass interference. We showed that Walker's right hand hit on a defender, and that time, after the errant throw that went high, he looked at that hand once again. As a quarterback, if you can't feel the football the way you are used to, accuracy is the first thing that goes down the tubes. He saw it. He was kind of hanging there limp, his yeah. right hand, as he was waiting for the play call to come in. Temple's face third and nine, third and 18, third and 13, and this third and 11 doesn't get anything as Watson and Bryant were matched up again. It's fourth down. And Wake Forest defensively just did a great job knowing that it was third and 11. Watson set down at the, at basically the line to gain. You know that the receiver is typically going to break his route out deep enough to pick up a first down. Jennings wasn't looking for what Philip Walker threw at him. You can see they're looking at that hand again on the sideline, Jason. That right hand of Walker is a right-handed thrower. We'll see how he looks coming back as Bates goes diving on it at the 19-yard line. That is rather high risk. It saved his team some field position, though. That was a pretty good decision if you could do it. Check in with Cart. Well, we saw Philip Walker Jr. throwing some errant passes, high balls, and Right now, trainers evaluated him. They actually put some tape on one of his fingers. Kelly, it looks like his knuckles, and you know as a former quarterback what that will do in terms of the trajectory. He's on the sideline right now, right now passing the ball, but in some obvious pain, and keep you guys updated. Thanks, Cart. Cade Carney right up the middle for Wake Forest. You know, Jason, as a quarterback, it's you don't want people around your legs, and you don't want people around your hand. And that's what happened to Walker. He threw the ball in the follow through. He hit a defensive player. Carney again, battering ram for a first down for Wake Forest. So, as a quarterback, when that happens, what are you fighting? It's all about the feel of the ball. Throwing the ball, ball handling in the run game is all about the quarterback feeling it, which obviously starts with your hands. And if your hand is banged up, sometimes you certainly don't feel as comfortable doing that stuff. Three more for Carney. Robinson to tackle. Second down and seven coming up. And Wake Forest has gotten a lot of success out of this tempo offense after a first drive that didn't yield much. Wake leading 14 7 in Annapolis. Walford runs right into the pressure and down he goes. Sacked by Hassan Reddick and a flag has come in late. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 52. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic. First down. It's on Avery Ellis, the redshirt senior defensive end. Well, Son Reddick runs the rail and gets to the quarterback, John Wolford. And Wolford has to understand you're not going to have this much time. Look at one, look at two, throw the ball away. That ball needs to come out before that. But it's the extracurricular out of Avery Ellis after that play, which hurts his team. First, quarter. first game in three years that Wake Forest hasn't had to deal with the possibility of one of its plays being in the opponent's hands. And the Demon Deacons have done well with the first 15 minutes. Cause and effect, who knows? But 14 points are on the board. They went down early, but Wake has the last 14 to lead after one in Annapolis. Washington, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson. Four days from now as we come to you from Annapolis. It is the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman and Wake Forest, which had won just one game in its last six as a 14-7 lead 
after one quarter. What went right for Wake? Wake made a great adjustment. Their two scoring drives were 60 yards and 54 yards. Two things that happened. They were off of short punts and the adjustment where Wake went up tempo. And that really worked for them. They started to get some chunk yards, and Temple defensively did not respond well to that. Temple offensively, their first play of the game, 48-yard touchdown, they've gone backwards since that. Only six yards in their next 15 plays. This is the bottom five offense in the country for Wake Forest. Walford the throwback. Saraday with the catch and Cam Saraday who had a touchdown earlier makes his way to the 39 yard line on a gain of 16. I actually think this was the initial de design. They just got to it differently. Saraday I think was going to block and then leak out after his pass protection. But the problem was John Walford got chased out of the pocket and some way found Saraday on the backside. You know, that's the type of play that Wake Forest at points maybe has not been able to run because of the leak situation. You talk about specialty type plays in that game at Louisville, that may be one of those types of plays that you wouldn't see in a game like that. That's a great point, and I think that's what people really need to understand is Wake Forest is challenged as far as explosiveness on the offensive side. So during the week, you're designing stuff schematically to give you some chunk yardage. And if you have to rip that page out of your playbook from week to week, or it's been compromised in some way, that's a huge letdown for your players. Second and long, Walford spins it out wide, and it's incomplete. Cart. Well, think about being Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator for Wake. This is like a new lease on life that you are able to use your entire playbook and everything you installed that week. Keep in mind also, Wake's one of the most improved run teams in the nation the last two years. We haven't seen the passing game over the last couple seasons that we're seeing today. Ruggiero, the one on the left, the offensive coordinator for Wake Forest, and the shackles are off essentially for Wake. Last three years playing behind the eight ball as Walford hits on the screen. It's Scotty Washington to set up a decision for Dave Clawson now. Yeah, you just talked about the chains being off. We may see him go for it right here on fourth down. You're in that in-between zone. It's a long field goal. You don't gain much field position by punting it. Why not roll the dice at fourth and five right here? Maggio, the freshman. Fair catch signaled for from Chandler, and ball comes out. Let's see. Wake Forest football. Dayton Demo, the long snapper, got down there. Jason, to win football games at the FBS level, you have to make the right decisions. Going for it on fourth and five was the right decision. After the penalty, the punt is the right decision. And sometimes when you do the right thing, good things happen. The muff punt leads to Wake getting the football back, obviously in terrific field position for their offense. Chandler doesn't return a lot of punts for Temple. We had seen Thomas previously, and Wake gets a big boost off the muff punt. Carney out wide. Cade Carney, touchdown! Well, that's a different kind of sudden change offense. Wade goes into the gun. It's a power play. An offensive lineman from the left is going to pull right and lead. Carney up inside in a very, very physical running back in his own right, and the muff punt leads to another touchdown by Wake Forest. Second time in this game already that an offense has scored on the first play after a turnover. 21 unanswered points for Wake Forest. Chandler with the muff. Demol down there to recover it. And then the freshman from Advance, North Carolina, advances Wake to the end zone. Temple will get it back. Hit him on a 48-yard pass play. 
on its first play and nothing much since. Isaiah Wright, the return for the Owls. And another dynamic return just short of the 30 as we check in with Kark. Thank you, Jason. New Temple head coach Jeff Collins. He's turning around, looking at the plays. He's into it already. And, and coach, you had an amazing run at Mississippi State. Four years as a defensive coordinator, two at Florida. What drove you to Temple in this job? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime, you know, they're not giving away top 20 jobs nowadays. So the chance to come back to back 10 win seasons, back to back uh, East championships and one of the, you know, one of the up and coming divisions uh, conferences. So just it was a perfect thing. And my wife and I are city people. So the chance to live in Philly, Philly a great place. We're just excited. Now you had a chance to spend some time with this team and you were at practice the other day. What's the biggest takeaway when you watch this team play? They're, they're a resilient group of kids. They're tough, they're physical. Uh, you know, they have that, that, that you know, kind of grit about them and uh, just kind of draws you in, uh, wants you, you know, makes you want to be a part of it. What's Temple getting in Jeff Collins? <laughs> a lot of excitement. Uh, you know, they're, you know, guy that's going to love them, that's going to care about them, uh, always have their best interests, and we're going to play a high level of football, exciting, fun, and uh, tough and physical. When this bowl season and the dust settles, when you sit in your office for the first time, what's on the agenda? Yeah, well, the big thing right now is, you know, completing a staff, putting the staff together, uh, putting together a really good recruiting class to add to what's been, you know, built here. And, uh, you know, just getting these guys back on campus, starting the offseason conditioning, and uh, making another run at it. What are you telling recruits? Yeah, Philly's a great place. The players that we have here at this university are amazing. They're tough. They're resilient. Uh, they love playing football. Uh, you're going to develop to be, you know, the best at everything that you can do in the classroom, off the field, and then, you know, if you want to play at the next level, this is a place to be. Well, they got an awesome coach in you. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Jeff Collins, Kark, thank you. Really joining up in the heyday of Temple football, back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. This is a third down for Walker, and he snaps it off well short of the marker to Bryant. Each of four with the tackle. It's punt time again for the Owls. Well, there is a theme to getting off the field if you're Wake Forest defensively, and Mike Elko told us that. It's get Temple to a third down and passing situation, and we like our chances, and I think that's the fourth time in a row that that's worked exceptionally well. The takeaways are objective number one defensively for, for Wake Forest, and then it's find a way to end the drive, and typically you end drives if you can get the opposition behind the chains, and Wake Forest has been successful four drives in a row. Three of them, three and outs for the Temple offense. Bates, white flags this one. We wish you Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Certainly hope you got to enjoy your holiday week as it continues along to December 31st and the college football playoff semifinals on the horizon. John Walford on the roll, and he has some room. Out of bounds again as we check in with Carter. Well, Jason, you mentioned the pinstripe ball. I'm heading up to the Bronx tomorrow to do that game between Northwestern and Pitt. And had a chance to talk to head coach Pat Fitzgerald from Northwestern. This will be music to your ears. Grew up in the south side of Chicago and a White Sox fan. How about that? Getting to play at Yankee Stadium. Pat Fitzgerald has made some great choices in his life. Certainly as Washington <laughs> reels that one in right at the marker and a first down. Well, in the meantime, quarterback John Walford from Wake Forest is playing well. He's settled in. His feet are right. He's making good decisions. And I still like the pep and the step offensively for Wake Forest. One of the most sacked quarterbacks in the FBS, staring down the barrel of a third down and long. Here comes Reddick. He's picked up. Walford floats it out, and he's got a completion. Chuck Wade down the sideline for a first down Wake Forest on another throwback. Alec Bachman was the outside receiver and came inside and essentially picked the man that was supposed to be covering Chuck Wade. More tempo. Walford with time. Zips it complete. Washington inside the 15 and down to the 10 for the redshirt freshman out of D.C. And once again, Jason, we see that Temple working after a big play. Wake Forest goes Temple. It thins out the defense, gives Walford a good look, and right now he's finding the open guy. This is against a Temple defense that had allowed 20 points over the last four games. 
gets about 43% of the time the opponent to not complete a first down on a drive. And, and the Demon Deacons are driving again, 21 unanswered. Matt Colburn, the tailback, not much. It's third down as Robinson made the stop. Well, Wake certainly is getting things going, and you know they're only averaging 19 points a game on the year. They have 21 already, and they are almost double their yards per play. That explosive element we talked about, they found it in droves. They only have 17 first downs per game this season. They already have 13, so it makes you wonder. Third down, Wolford, end zone, looking for Washington, and incomplete. When you say it makes you wonder, Wake Forest, for the first time, doesn't have to worry about maybe, possibly, its plays being in the opponent's hands. Yeah, and Scotty Washington goes up, he's 6'5", and you got to give him a chance, and he just didn't make a very good play on the ball. His hands didn't get up till late. That was actually fairly well thrown by John Walford, and not a very good play on it by Washington, but that's exactly what I'm referring to. If your playbook isn't being compromised time and time again, you, you have to wonder, is this team, were they capable of doing this more often? First team all ACC kicker Mike Weaver is good. Wake Forest for just the second time in seven games is over 20 points. Temple's defense keeps Washington out of the end zone, but Weaver strikes from 25, and Wake Forest has a three-score lead in Annapolis. When we practice this kind of stuff during the week and it's stolen from us, what have we lost? The, the gadget type plays, exactly. the new stuff. The, the stuff that's uh, intimate design during the week. It's not about the X's and O's outside of that. It's what we designed this week to go against that team. Again, cause and effect, you don't know. It is one game, certainly, but it is definitely curious as Wake Forest runs another interesting play on the last drive. Yeah, a little bit of a pick play, and actually, this could have been offensive pass interference. 17, Alex Bachman is going to come inside from his outside of alignment, runs into the cover guy that was designed to cover Chuck Wade in the slot, and that's what a rub looks like if you're on the offensive side of the ball. That looks like an illegal pick if you're a defensive-minded guy. And since I'm not, I'm going to call that a good play. <laughs> you know, the good thing is you can keep bias out of your analysis. Yeah, we appreciate you. that very much. That's where you have to step in and kind of <laughs> debate the other side's perspective. They'd be 50 up each way as Walker with the throw all the way across the 45-yard line. And that looks like it's good enough to Kirkwood on a gain of 10. And Temple certainly has a little more rhythm on this drive. Temple is a, their mentality offensively is just get one first down. Well, they haven't been able to do that the last few drives. And so now they have a little more rhythm because they've been able to convert and extend the drive. Walker has it tipped and it is intercepted. Picked off by Ejafor. Camp batted it, Ejafor plucked it. Well, Kemp got the pressure along with Ejafor, and Kemp bats the ball up in the air. Ejafor comes down with it. There was an open receiver. Philip Walker was going to the right guy, but this is who Wake is. They add at least one about half the time to the offensive side of the scrimmage or line of scrimmage. Demetrius Kemp was that extra guy. He's an unblocked defender coming into the throwing lane of the quarterback. He bats it up. And Ejafor is the benefactor of that. Walford off the pump, up in the pocket to run, and John Walford across the 20 yard line, down to the 19, gain of eight. So we see good decisions from Walford throwing the football out of bounds. That was a great decision. Very well covered on the back end by Temple, and the quarterback runs with it and gets the, as much as he can. Colburn again. 
for a Wake Forest first down. And look, even if it's not that Wake is having great success because the playbook is full and kept quiet this week, there's certainly a mental effect on the players as well who feel like they've been freed, isn't there? Yeah, I think that is a great point that we hadn't really hit on. I think it's the mental outlook right now. I think Tim, or Wake Forest is playing free offensively, and the players are kind of demonstrating that very thing. If you believe it, it is. And that's exactly the way Wake Forest is acting offensively. Walford down the middle, and that is batted away at the last moment. Washington, the intended target. Delvon Randall and Derek Thomas on the coverage. Yeah, Thomas actually had very good coverage. Slant route inside. You just get in the hip pocket of the receiver. Washington doesn't run a very sharp route, by the way. You need to break it a little bit flatter. His upfield angle allowed Derek Thomas to come underneath that lane. Second down, Wake Forest. Colburn again. Another neat run inside the five-yard line. It's all about numbers in the box, and if Wake Forest has the advantage, this is what you get, a simple zone run up the middle by their most elusive running back. Late choice there by Wolford. He was tossed forward by Williams. And he gets a yard. Second down and goal for the Demon Deacons offense, which scores about 19 points a game. Yeah, and they love to control it. So does Temple. But right now, Wake Forest is having the upper hand. They've been able to sustain drives. But it was the adjustment to go up Temple by Wake offensively that changed the dynamics in this game. And it's still working for them right here. On the counteraction, Colburn driving the legs. Touchdown! And this time, Wake Forest actually runs a little bit of power game. They lead an offensive lineman, and then 41, Devin Pike from his left tight end position is up back position pulls in and leads Colburn we think into the end zone I would think this might be stopped in a further look taken at it well the ball is ahead of his body as we look at the replay how far ahead is the question yeah and it just has to penetrate the very front of that white line that represents the end zone and I think Colburn did that Weaver ready for the extra point. And a Wake Forest team that for most of the season would have been found not guilty of committing acts of offense has 31 points on the board in its bowl game. A thunderous offensive display for the Demon Deacons. And then thank you. Don't like to hear about grades being given out in December. You're going to get the college kids nervous about the report card coming, but uh, it's A-plus right now for Wake Forest. 31-7, 31 unanswered against a tremendous Temple defense. Top five of the country on the way in to this game. Temple will get it back off the Wake Forest touchdown. Isaiah Wright on the return and he is driven back ball came loose temple got it back and that was a big yeah big isaiah recovery. wright essentially dribbled this ball back to him that was very loose ball security as well and isaiah wright the true freshman who brings that explosive element to this temple team dribbles the football and very fortunate that this didn't go off to wake once again and they don't need any help the way they're playing currently a muff punt and a dropped kickoff on a tackle one for chandler one for right and first down for temple walker to the sideline and 
he has a completion. Steve, thank you for joining in. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Steve Shaw, coordinator of officials for the Sun Belt to the SEC, as Keith Kirkwood has a 21-yard gain. And Philip Walker can spin it, and this is a very good touch right there. And they have two timeouts, plenty of time left. But right now, you just get the sense that Temple really needs to get this in the end zone. Wake Forest unexpectedly, 31 points in the first half. Temple needs something good to happen right here going into halftime. Walker had it tipped. <laughs> Tip interception previously for Walker. This one is tipped on the way to Bryant. So the 5'11 senior out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, has that one deflected. And I believe it was Julian Jackson, number 42, the defensive end that gets his hands up. And Wake has been Wake Force has been effective doing that defensively. Just getting your hands up. If you can't get to the quarterback, find some way to affect the quarterback. And Wake is very good at doing that. Second down, Thomas on the draw. Jihad Thomas across the 30-yard line. Remember, Temple gets it after halftime. This is a big drive for the Owls. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, and that's the first time we've really heard much out of Thomas. Shifty, quick, explosive. Temple needs something explosive to happen right now before halftime. One-handed catch on the snap and a high throw for Bryant. And that wasn't a very good throw, obviously, by Walker. There were double post routes. The defense jumped the first post route, and then Walker was over the top, but this ball was nowhere close. Very well designed, and there is a window there. You can see the safety. Jesse Bates jumped that first receiver, leaving that opportunity for the quarterback, but it was airmail. Ball hawking safety Bates with five interceptions. He's prone to chase the ball a little bit. Thomas in at tailback. Walker is high again. When he's missed today, it has been high. This time, Bryant against Watson once more. Yeah, and we talked about that hand earlier where he hit the defender. I don't know that that's the problem. A lot of times when you're high, you're just not getting torque on the ball. You're kind of throwing from your back foot. You're not finishing on your front foot. And on that play, you can see Walker did that. He didn't really finish out on that front toe, and therefore the ball sails on him at the end. Sizable Wake Forest crowd gets loud on third down and 10. Tenth play of the drive. Walker loses the football. Still a fight for it at the 27. And this is going to be fourth down. Temple is on it. Thomas Brown knocked it free, and now Temple's got a long field goal. Yeah, that sack forces this field goal to be, what, about a 45-yarder now, so that's a much different animal. And you have to think they're thinking get three points on the board. They'll be down by 21. Like you said, they received the kick to start the second half. That's not a bad thing as... as much as they've been outplayed in this first half, being down three touchdowns, when you get the ball to start the second half, I can live with that. A 45 yarder, Boom Boom is going to have to boom this one. There isn't any doubt about it, but he's capable of doing that. The freshman drives through it. Boom Mary is good. Here, Wake Forest is seven points shy of its season high of the year at halftime. 31-10, Wake Forest over Temple. Stay tuned for all the highlights and analysis. Adnan and the guys in the halftime report. It's 31 points against the third best statistical defense in all of college football. Why you been so good on that side of the ball? Well, I think we've had a good mix. Uh, I think some of the tempo stuff we're doing has really helped us and converting third downs, and we're getting touchdowns in the red zone. How much of the success do you think has to do with being able to use the full playbook? Um, again, we're right now, we're executing well and we're playing well. Nice try. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> we welcome you back to the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Just off our nation's capital, Wake Forest. 31-10 at halftime, trying to get to win number seven. Temple 
with a seven-game win streak on the line. Jason Benetti, Kelly Stauffer, and uh, the world turned upside down in this game. We thought Temple's defense might be the key unit. Wake has shredded Temple. You realize Wake Forest offensively averages 19 points a game, right? Yeah, they they had all the answers. That I think the game changed in the first half when they went up tempo. They got in that rhythm. Their quarterback started making better decisions. They found something they liked, no doubt about that. Wake Forest will kick it to Temple to open the second half. Long road for the Owls started by Isaiah Wright who runs into the wall and gets just across the 25. Paul Carcaterra just moments ago with Ed Foley, Temple head coach. Coach, Phil Walker's right hand injury, how much has that affected his throwing? A little bit, but he's a tough kid. He dislocated his knuckle. He put it back in place in the middle of the drive, went back in, said, I'm fine. Asked him how he was at halftime. He said, Coach, there's no way you're taking me out of this game. Coach, you've been around this program now for nine years. What gives you the confidence there's still fight left in this team? Because we've done it before. We fight for 60 minutes. That's what we do. That's all we know how to do, and we're going to do it today. We're going to fight right to the last whistle. Thank you, Coach. That time, Walker across the middle to Bryant, and a first down for Temple. How about that? A dislocated knuckle he put that back sounds, in. Yeah, that sounds painful. But I want to – can I play for Ed Foley, like, right now? Uh, yeah. You can be on my team, and Park can be on my team, and we'll go play for Ed Foley. Actually, I don't think you can be on our team. <laughs> Park and I can play for Ed Foley. I'll be uh, I'll be playing Uno in the corner. I mean, Thank you. seriously, do you want to run yes. through a wall after hearing that man talk? That's why he's taken four coaching changes through that transition. I even talking to him on the phone. He's an intense guy. But in that conversation, you, you really do want to line up for it. Yeah, this is where Philip Walker got hurt. That throwing hand actually hits the forearm of the defender, Thomas Brown, number 26. And he's been throwing high ever since. I mean, there have been some that haven't even been in the right zip code. And if you don't feel the ball well as a quarterback, it's hard to spin it well. And Philip Walker has been nursing that dislocated, relocated knuckle ever since. That sounds painful. Walker to the outside has an easy completion across midfield to Jennings. And Adonis Jennings cuts it inside. Jennings is gone. Touchdown. Accurate, timely throws by the quarterback, in this case, Philip Walker, allows yards after the catch. And that's what you see out of Adonis Jennings. And Temple needed something really good to happen, and that's really good right there. Outflanks the defense, and Jennings turns it up and then says, the heck with going out of bounds. I'm going to go ahead and get this into the end zone. And we talked about it. Temple got a field goal to end the first half. They get the ball in the second half and take full advantage of it. You saw Ed Foley on the sideline say to his senior quarterback, Philip Walker, let's go. Temple hit on its first play from scrimmage, a 48-yard touchdown early in the third quarter, a 58-yard score as Temple's back in it. There are a lot of tropical places to have a bowl game, and we see that quite a bit during Bowl Week, Capital One Bowl Mania, but to see graduates at our nation's capital enjoying it, the sights is always exciting as Adonis Jennings, the Pittsburgh transfer, gets into the end zone for Temple very early in the third quarter. And they strike up the band for the Owls, not far from home here in Annapolis. Armstrong is drilled. Oh, my goodness gracious. Ho, oh, baby, Deshaun Grimes for Temple. <laughs> Special teams are not for the faint of heart, and this is why Grimes absolutely blows up the returner. You know what's interesting? Ed Foley told us during the week that he's going to look at this game and see whose kickoff team shows up to play, and in the second half, that's his team. Burns to throw, and he's got it out wide for Hines who had a big play earlier to Bari Hines, tackled by Foster, gate of eight. 
And I don't think a whole lot's going to change X's and O's wise. It's it's still going to be a physical downhill type of run presence out of Carney and Colburn. And then it's the RPO concept, the run pass option. But it's the decision making by the redshirt freshman quarterback Kyle Kearns is going to be on the table now. Walford still out on the sideline. Third quarterback of the year for Wake Forest with the injury to Kendall Hinton earlier this season. A PCL injury for him. As they'll go Carney one more time. It's been both Carney and Colburn tonight for Wake Forest. That's a gain of three for a first down for the Demon Deacons. John Walford had that bad interception really to begin this game on the first possession for Wake Forest. But after that, Jason, we talked about it. He was making great decisions and his offense scored 31 points in that first half. So now it's about Kyle Carney's or Kearns' decision making. And we'll see how that goes against an aggressive Temple defense that has much more juice in the second half. Boy, isn't it amazing, too, that Walford is injured on a play where he gain some yardage as Kearns whips it out on the slant to Alex Bachman for a first down across the 45 in the Temple territory. And we see that the Temple right now, even with the backup quarterback Kearns in, the big play, and Wake wants to go up Temple once again. Kearns under pressure. End zone, it is intercepted. Delvon Randall with his fourth of the year for Temple. High risk for Wake. And Kearns just makes a bad throw. The, the read was not egregious, but it was just a bad throw. Cam Serenade, the tight end that we've talked about, is such a great weapon, was getting down the middle of the field. But this ball actually was just thrown the wrong way. You have to drive this throw a little bit more. He's over top of that defender, but if you put the ball up there, you put it in harm's way to the safety that actually came over from the opposite hash in Delvin Randall. If you drive it right over top of that underneath defender, then 23 Randall doesn't really have the time to go get it like that. Second Wake Forest interception. The first one led to Temple's first touchdown as Armstead is bottled up short of the line of scrimmage. Second and long, Wake's rush defense has been strong tonight. Yeah, and Jason, all year, Wake's defense has been their best unit. And so they're gonna have to prove it right here. Temple got some things going on their first drive, got the ball in the end zone on that explosive play by Adonis Jennings. Wake Forest defensively needs to come up with something because their offense is reeling with the injury to John Walford. Temple tonight, eight tenths of a yard per rush. Walker to throw, wide open man across the 30. Jennings again for a first down for the Owls. Good recognition by Philip Walker. It was his own blitz. The void was to the right side of the quarterback, and that's exactly where he found Jennings. Jennings sits down in that void. It was zone on the back end, blitz on the front end, and the quarterback Walker found Jennings. Walker going down the field. What an adjustment by Bryant. My goodness, over the shoulder. Bryant reels it in. Bryant was running the double move and on Amari Henderson. Henderson actually had the double move covered. He grabbed Bryant originally, but Bryant makes a tremendous adjustment on the ball. It was underthrown outside. Great body control by Bryant to come down with that one. Fifth completion, 20 or more for Walker tonight. Counteraction, Armstead is driven back. Elante Bateman, the freshman D tackle, was in along with Williams. And some post play shenanigans going on. I think a good job by the officials right there allowing the shenanigans as you put it to to play out a little bit without throwing the flag but remember that throw by philip walker on that last play to brian or actually it was kirkwood the driving of the throw past the underneath coverage that's exactly what kearns needed to do with serenade remember on that interception he needed to buzz it right past that underneath defender 
Tail of two throws as Bryant is intended and incomplete. Watson with the coverage. Third down. Is this two down territory? I don't think it needs to be. I think you need to get points on the board. Well defended by Brad Watson. Once you see the path of the receiver going to the fade, just get in his front shirt pocket and then make a play on the ball when it enters the neighborhood. And that Brad Watson did all those things well. Last time, Wake Forest won a bowl game. Jim Grobe, who was leading Baylor this year, was the head coach back in 08 in this game. Walker on the roll, looking for the touchdown. This is incomplete. Bryant couldn't hang on right at the goal line, and it looks like they're going to go ahead and kick. I think that's a good decision. The momentum, I think you keep the momentum if you can just get points on the board, and that's what it appears the Temple is going to do, although all bets are off in the bowl season. You could see a fake here as well, but the quarterback Walker getting out of the pocket and Bryant was actually the third look. The receiver coming from the backside right along the goal line, but it was well defended all over by Wake Forest defensively. Bumeri from 24, the freshman, is good again. 13 unanswered points for Temple, which was down 31 to 7. Randall, the interception for Temple. The pick leader on this Temple defense sets up three for the freshman Boom Mary. It's an 11 point game. Kelly, Temple gets down the field on a throw that Wake wishes it would have made on the last drive. Yeah, Philip Walker is in his fourth year of starting, and it's not about just finding the right guy, it's throwing the right ball. And Kirkwood is covered over the top by the safety and underneath by the rover or strong safety and it's about the throw taking him inside to a spot a little bit low the safety can't get over the top and the underneath defender brown doesn't even know it's coming very well done by quarterback and receiver similar throw down the middle that caused wake some strife on the last drive as armstrong tiptoed out of the end zone accidentally and he's short of the 20-yard line backup quarterback rule number one don't force it let the game come to you that was the only incompletion for Kearns on his first drive. He's three out of four with an interception as Colburn is in as the tailback to the 20 cart. Well, gentlemen, don't expect to see John Wolford in anytime soon. He hasn't been officially ruled out for the game, but his helmet has been taken away from him. Obviously, he landed on his head, and they're taking precautionary uh, measures to, to to make sure that he's okay and, and Kelly I also saw him with the, the trainers complaining of a sore shoulder and you know with the history of the shoulder injury yeah. for Wolford too I, I think it's two things there yeah that's too bad because John Wolford actually got healthy for this game and has felt better than he has in probably a month and a half it's gonna be third down and long and and the helmet not being in yeah. his possession is a big sign yeah Hide the helmet. When, when the helmet goes, you know that you're probably not seeing the field again. So Clark said that's happened. So Kyle Kearns needs to take over. And we saw in that first drive, he was three out of four. His one miss was the interception, which is obviously not good. But he executed it well. You're third and seven in a passing down against Temple defensively. Alert right here if you're the backup quarterback, because you're going to get some heat. It's a run. And it is stuffed. Avery Williams, the senior leader, along with Praise Martin Aguike, the other senior on the tackle. And Wake Forest goes very conservative on this drive. And so you're going to have to see a difference in play calling as well. You have the backup quarterback in there. You're playing a defense in Temple that is very good across the board. They're a veteran group, and they heat you up. They don't let you offensively dictate the terms, and that's what we're seeing right now. A conservative call, punt the ball away, and let your defense from Wake Forest go out and play again. Thomas waits for it and fair catches at the 39-yard line. Temple on the comeback trail in the third quarter. It's an 11-point game moving to the fourth in Annapolis. Welcome you back to the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. 
part of Capital One Bowl Mania and a wild one so far just after Christmas in Annapolis and earlier today, a ceremony before the game, some folks being enlisted here in Maryland's capital. 31-20, Temple trying to come back in the military bowl presented by Northrop Grumman, trailing by 11, Walker missed it. Clanged off the head of Amari Henderson, second down. And Temple came out in a bunch set tight to the right side, and then that bunch just kind of explodes and expands and tries to find voids in the zone on the back end that Wake was presenting, but it just wasn't well executed, to say the least, by Temple. Temple's been behind the chains all day long, setting up an 0 for on third down for the game. Walker on the move. Walker throws. It is complete. Inside the 35-yard line to Bryant. The quarterback gets outside the pocket. Sometimes coverage breaks down on the back end. Wake actually did a nice job of sticking to their coverage on the back end, but it was a much better throw and a much better catch. And the big body tight end, Bryant, 6'3", and he needed that on that play. First down for Walker. Quick set, the out to Bryant in front of Watson, who finally wrestles him down at the 25-yard line. We saw in the second half, Jason, the, the perimeter players, the wide receivers for Temple have been a little more active. We're seeing a little more softness as a response out of Wake defensively. You can see it right there. Softness outside, bang it to your big receiver, Bryant, and just let him get a positive play on first down. Bryant and Jennings now both over 100 yards for the day. A rare run for Walker. And he makes it close to the chains to the 21 yard line. Looks like he has it for a first down. And Temple is typically great on at picking up first downs because they stay ahead of the chains. At that time, I think it was more of a, a play that was trying to slow it down number 53, Duke. Egypt for just a little bit. That defensive end has been getting active, getting after the runner or getting after the quarterback. And so you go ahead and, and isolate him. You make him make a bad decision. And that time he chased the running back inside. The quarterback pulls it outside and converts. Walker to throw on the screen, and Wake Forest diagnosed it perfectly. Bryant cleaned out by Bates. And way too late developing. Bryant was going to come back in the tunnel screen, and the idea is you want to pick up those offensive linemen. The first offensive lineman is going to pull and block out. The second offensive lineman is going to turn up. And Riley Skinner is in the booth taking this all in, and he certainly liked that one. Loss of one. Second down for Walker. Fading away. He throws too high, incomplete. Bryant and Watson both were trying to adjust, and Bryant had a play on that ball. He really did, and I think Philip Walker could have done a better job of setting his feet and throwing this to the backside. I think it was by design getting Walker outside to the right and throwing back to the left to Bryant on the corner route. There was a little pressure, but I thought Philip Bryant had the opportunity, or Walker had the opportunity to set his feet and throw that one with a little more giddy up on it. Temple 0 for 8 on third down. Half of those have been third and nine or more. Here we go again, third and 11. Walker to the 15 and Bryant. And now, Kelly, what do you do? You take the points, you go for the touchdown. I think I take the points right here as well. Still plenty of time. Your defense is playing really well in the second half. Get three on the board, and it's a one-possession game after that. So I think with Temple's defense, you have to play to their strength in this case. And I think Temple's going to do just that and try to get an additional three right here. 
Aaron Bumeri, the freshman kicker. From 32 this time. And Bumeri sinks it again. What a story he has been. The walk-on kicker for Temple has missed just twice all year. And it's an eight-point game, a one-score affair in Annapolis. And here at the Military Bowl, we think about Pat Tillman from 1994 to 97, an Arizona State linebacker. He was an Army Ranger as well and killed by friendly fire in 2004. His defensive coordinator at Arizona State is the man coordinating the defense for Temple right now. Phil Snow is there from 92 to 2000. And Phil Snow had to have somebody get in his ear to bring Pat Tillman to Arizona State. He said, I don't know about him. I don't know if we want him. Donnie Henderson, an assistant coach, said, you got to go see him again. We should take him. And, and Pat Tillman, during his tour, went up to Washington. He flew into Tacoma and saw Phil Snow, who was then coaching at Washington. They had a very deep conversation. And he said, look, I don't I don't know that I want to go back, but I finish everything that I start. And uh, it was a it was a definite indelible memory for Phil Snow of, of a young man who he'll never forget. Uh, Phil Snow had a uh, had a better better effort at Arizona State in terms of recruiting his nephew Dustin Pedroia who sold very hard onto Pat Murphy the baseball coach at Arizona State at the time that turned out to be a pretty good decision on the ground Colburn to the 35 yard line and Wake needed that very badly after the Temple field goal it's a first down and remember when Kyle Kearns came in, he was three for four on that first drive, and the fourth one was that interception. Since that time, the play calling up until this drive was six straight runs, which resulted in two three and outs. Now Kearns on the run, throws on the go, and has Hines, who didn't get his foot in while he was controlling the ball. It's incomplete. What I was getting at with Kyle Kearns, he came into this game, and he's thrown the ball quite well when he's had an opportunity. The one interception was just the wrong throw, but to the right guy. Throwing down the middle of the field, driving past the defender, he got too much air and it was picked up. And by and large, he's made great decisions and thrown the ball fairly well. Second down for Kearns. Colburn bounces it outside that tries to tuck it back in and Marshall makes the stop to set up third down at about seven so much of the the run pass option concept you'll have a pre snap look on one side if you like the screen or the slant or something that side you take it if you don't like that the post snap decision is the run inside off that overhang defender and if he steps down inside you pull it and throw it outside that's what Wake Forest has going right now with Kearns clock under eight minutes to go Kearns in for the injured Wolford Saturday couldn't hang on Marshall and Chandler collaborated to knock it away and it's fourth down Wake Forest you have to punt here right yeah no doubt about it Field position is critical right here, and that was just bad ball placement to the tight end. As a quarterback, Jason, a rule of thumb when you're throwing to someone other than wide receivers, ball placement needs to be on the body. That was behind the big tight end, Serenay. Even though he's a very good catcher of the football, it was poor ball placement by Kyle Kearns. So Maggio, the Maryland-born freshman, mishits it. Forty three on the average for the year and Maggio very frustrated with himself on what ends up a 17 yard punt Walker behind Bryant he adjusts anyway Bryant on the run inside the 30 yard line and across the 25 first down Temple well, Bryant's been the target of choice all night for Philip Walker the ball comes out quickly 
And once your playmaker has the ball in his hands, then he can do something with it. That's where all those yards after catch come from. Quick decision, good ball placement, give your playmakers time out in space to do something with it. That's the 11th catch of the game for the redshirt sophomore Bryant. Thomas is in as the tailback, and he's yanked down by each of four after a couple of yards, second down. Jason, coming into this game, the defenses to me were the best units on the field. Right now, Wake has to bow off. They have to make a play for their team because Philip Walker is filling it, especially giving it to Bryant. Walker going for it all, a lot of hand contact, and it's incomplete. Henderson was engaged with Kirkwood. The Temple fans and Kirkwood wanted a flag, third down. This appeared to me that Amari Henderson, number 10, is on the coverage to, against Kirkwood, and he had his hands all over him. The question is, do the hands impede the receiver's opportunity to go catch that ball? And I would say absolutely yes. I think that easily could have been called pass interference on Amari Henderson. Question is, did the receiver Kirkwood create some of the contact too? I think Kirkwood was trying to go by him on the outside to the fade and wasn't allowed to do that by Henderson. Walker on third down. Bryant's dragged down and the flag comes in. Watson and Bryant, and that was a car wreck right at the goal line. And then Pass interference, defense, number 25, 15 yards to the previous spot, automatic, first down. Well, Brad Watson is matched up, bump and run outside on Bryant, and Bryant certainly has been the target of the day in this game, and the double move gets up inside, started outside, gave a good swim move, and then is getting vertical again after the defender gets on his heels. And actually, it wasn't as egregious as I thought. Watson was kind of going down, and then I think sold it well and ended up making contact with Bryant, no doubt about that. Seventh penalty against Wake Forest. It's first and goal. For the senior quarterback, Walker, Temple, winners of seven straight, trying to come back to tie. Off the low snap and miscommunication. Bryant was not ready to come back to the ball second and goal. And that same matchup, Brad Watson is right in the face mask of Bryant, and Philip Walker was expecting kind of the back shoulder throw because the coverage is over the top, and that's the key for the quarterback. If the defender is running to the fade, I'm going to throw back shoulder to my receiver. The quarterback expected Bryant to understand that, and he didn't. All the way downfield in just two minutes and a couple of seconds. This was a 31-7 game for Wake Forest. Walker giving ground. Walker goes down. He couldn't afford it. And Ejafor spiked him at the 30-yard line. This is not the type of decision that you would think out of a four-year starter. This ball has to be thrown out of bounds, thrown away, and you make it very, very difficult on this third and forever situation. But once the pass broke down and it was a two-man concept, you have to throw that ball out of the back of the end zone and save that yardage. It's a 22-yard loss. With one timeout remaining, Temple gets to about the 21 with a pass to Jennings. And now, what do you do? Kick the field goal and hook the wagon to your defense. Your defense has been the best unit, a top five defense in all the country. Kick a field goal here, expect your defense to get it back, and then have a chance to win the game. You disagree with me, don't Even you? Even with one timeout? I mean, we're talking a couple first downs, you don't see the ball again. I like my defense, Jason. I like them a lot. Boomeri from 38. On the way. And good. Big sack by Wake Forest defense. And a loss of 22 stalled the Temple drive. The Owls end up with their second field goal of the fourth quarter. 
and Wake Forest leads 31-26, hoping for its seventh win after losing its final three in the regular season. Tune in to ESPN3 for the postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following this game. Wake led 31-7. Temple has 19 unanswered to this point. Short kick to the six. Armstrong on the return. Armstrong keeps his feet. Armstrong across midfield. Armstrong could go. He's inside the 20-yard line. It's an 80-yard return. And they call this a middle return, and it's basically right down Main Street, and Armstrong takes full advantage of it. Get a hat on a hat, get people covered up, and let the speed of Armstrong take over. But I think this was allowed by Bumeri's kick. He got under it a little bit. It was spinning too quickly, didn't go very deep, and it gave away forces an opportunity to set up their return, and they did it very well. By far the longest kick return this year for Wake Forest comes in a huge spot. Turns the freshman quarterback on the handoff for Carney. And Cade Carney with a deft run. Williams the tackle at the 10. And if Temple obviously defensively can still hold Wake Forest to a field goal or a field goal try, it's still a one possession game. But the thing now is the time on the clock. That's the big. That's the big difference at this point in time. They can move it all the way inside of three minutes with the play clock down to one if you care to do it. Ed Foley has just one timeout remaining. He used one recently on the offensive side of the ball. Carney again off the hesitation and he batters his way to about the eight yard line. Temple conserving the timeout third down and three for Wake Forest and there's a decision looming for the Demon Deacons if they end up in a fourth down and short as Armstrong has really set the table well for Dave Clawson. And it will take a act of Congress for Kyle Kearns to put this ball in the air and in the air in third and three. This is going to be on the ground again, and then I don't think it's a decision at all if it's fourth down. You kick a field goal and make Temple to have to do something with not a whole lot of time on the clock. Carney again is met and dragged down. Randall with the stop, and the timeout yeah. goes for Temple with just over two minutes to play. You think kick the field goal for sure? Yeah, I think kick the field goal, no doubt about it. Potentially go up by eight. Yeah, and Ed Foley is a special teams coach, the interim head coach for, for Temple right now, and they block kicks very well, so they could do that right here also. To make it an eight-point game. Weaver. Good. Well, Temple is left with the hard two-minute offense. A minute 59, but now they have no timeouts left. They have a four-year starter at quarterback, which can't hurt, and Mike Weaver, the first team all ACC kicker comes through in a big way. Think about what these two teams have been through. Temple with a new head coach for this game. Wake Forest with weeks leading up to this game of hearing about a radio analyst who leaked plays to opposing teams. And it comes down to two minutes worth of football. Wright on the return. Isaiah Wright breaks a tackle. And he's all the way across the 45-yard line. In order to lock up the trophy, Temple needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie and then hope for overtime. At the military ball presented by Northrop Grumman. 
Walker down the middle has a completion into Wake Forest territory. Keith Kirkwood, who had the game winner for Temple late against UCF earlier this year. Second down and short for the Owls. Short set for Walker, and it's popped free from Deloach. Wake Forest defensively on the back end, electing to go quarter coverage, which basically becomes a softer zone in this situation, but you have the ability to play tighter coverage underneath those four secondary players, and that's what happened right there. The ball was punched out actively on the sideline. Need to complete the catch, make a move common to the game, and called incomplete. Temple decides to run it. And Ejafor swings down Thomas short of the line of scrimmage. Obviously trying to catch Wake Forest off guard. And Wake Forest is one of the most sound defenses in all the land. And Ejafor was not fooled on that play. This is the game. Fourth down. Nobody home. My, oh, my. Wake Forest holds the line and puts it away. Deloach and Jennings ended up in the same place. Obviously, one of them was wrong running their route on that play. The four-year quarterback and Philip Walker expected someone to be going deep, and nobody was there for this pass. The two receivers standing out together. One of those guys is wrong, and it looked like Jennings figured it out late, but that gotcha play right there. And Ejiofor would have none of it and get Thomas to the ground. That was not well executed, to say the least, in that situation by Temple. Temple on the ground tonight, 23 carries, negative 20 yards. Wake's run defense was stellar here in Annapolis, and the reserve quarterback, Kyle Kearns, will be the one to run down the clock and look out Dave Clawson. They're coming for you. And Kyle Kearns just had to come in and, and basically hold the four. He made the one mistake in the end zone on the interception, but by and large, he just executed the game plan and played to the strength of this Wake Forest team all year long, which is their defense. A shower on the horizon for Dave Clawson. Three and nine the last two years. Seven and six in 2016 for the Demon Deacons. Thirty-four twenty-six. Wake Forest over Temple. Temple cannot pick up its 11th win for the first time in program history. Wake Forest gets win number seven, its first bowl win since 2008. Our final score, 34-26, Wake Forest over Temple. Coming up next on ESPN to San Diego, Minnesota, Washington State, the National Funding Holiday Bowl. Thanks for watching. Good evening from Annapolis.